Hello dear chess friends, welcome to our new video. Here I will present some famous game, the ninth champion, the ninth world champion Tigran Petrosian played with white pieces against Anatoly Banik. The game was played in 1958 in some Soviet Union uh, championship and uh, it's very important to see what happened in that game. Well, uh, something very shocking happened in some game. Uh, well, in some moment you'll see some shocking the decision made by Petrosian. Uh, practically, he, uh, in contrary to all principles, went for exchanging good bishop for bad one, but that was exactly far the best uh, strategical decision in that moment. Let's continue with uh, showing that game. Well, after c4, e5. Game was played in some Indian manner, but after knight f3, knight f6, g3, d6, now white uses fact knight is not on c, is not on d7, where it should be more flexible. Knight on c6 will uh, cause some problems to black. Well, right now with knight on c6, black must not uh, allow uh, exchanging pawns on square e5 because queens would be exchanged. And in that position, after exchanging queens, knight simply belong on square d7, where pawn will come to c6 to restrict that knight on c3. But, okay, all that is probably very well known to the masters, some lower calibers. Uh, I suggest to them just to believe me, that's simply the fact. And in that position, of course, black must take and continue playing with something like bishop d7, bishop g2, maybe g6, with slightly better position for white, but uh, there is nothing evident for white. So black allowed first mistake, g6, that's horrible, but in that year, 1958 was uh, the year game was played, uh, some theory of King's Indian and of actually other Indian defenses uh, were not so uh, well established so uh, in that moment g6 was maybe just some some sort of novelty of some innovation uh, anyway that is just bad and Petrosian decided to react classy with de now de5 will lead to another problems well after knight d8 king d8 bishop g5 bishop e7 white may continue with castling where bishop d7 will lead to collapse after bishop h3 and knight d7 would lead to collapse after knight d5, excellent move. So black after capturing, let's say, is not able to protect all that pawns which white attack uh, attacks in the same time. So uh, in that position black decided to capture with knight. Now he will be ready to play c6 to paralyze white knight on c3 but still there are problems. Because simply in that position, uh, black knight does not belong on f6. Uh, very often, I played such systems uh, so many times in my career and I implemented with some success plan where black plays that setup. Pawn goes to f6 and knight to h6 and f7, where after c6 black very well controls the center and he is safe from any uh, jumps of white knight. This time knight is on f6 and pawn is on g6 that allows white to go for pinning that knight and after bishop e7 castling all that is forced. Now bishop d7 will lose the game after bishop h3 that bishop will eventually fall. Uh, king e8 will lead to defeat will lead to defeat after knight b5. There is no good way to defend square c7. And black is practically forced to play knight d7. And now, first key important in that game. What to do as white? Uh, now, if white takes, black king will take. Let me show you this. And I will present now some interesting line where at the end looks like black would be out of problems. If white goes for to support initiative this way, just look, f5 e4 c6 knight e3 black has something like f4 and after capturing 
long variation but i think that variation proves black uh is not in 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 danger and why decided to seek for something else well something else should be found here there must be something and why to use the fact black pawn is not on g7 it is already on g6 that will give petrosian strong impulse to his attack and he play absolutely amazing move h4 so what to do as black if he plays f6 we'll see that was played in the game h6 okay but we'll just take right now that's not the same and after that and after that bishop h3 the point is white pawn is on h4 and if black plays f5 white will crush his pawn structure with a5 achieving absolutely winning position that's that's petrosian idea uh, by the way if black plays here something peaceful like c6 now knight comes to e4 h6 and after that so beautiful move knight d6 rook h7 well the game is horrible for black black cannot avoid some material defeats after f5 closing that diagonal as you can see dear chess friends e4 again crashing and white wins the game here by the way h5 would also lead to win so that was white's idea with h4 white wants to provoke f6 or h6 then to strike with h5 in some good moment and to crush black very often you should support your initiative will some drastic measures so i hope you will implement uh, such principles in your future games let's see what game what happened in our game after h4 f6 and bishop e3 excellent spot of course white does not plan to play e3 or e4 at all no white bishop f1 will go to g2 or h3 perfect place for the bishop c6 and h5 there is nothing better for black than g5 of course bishop h3 controlling that uh, neuralgic diagonal king c7 and knight e4 there are so many weak squares or potentially weak squares white wants to use with his uh, minor pieces and with his major pieces knight b6 was played bishop c8 rook a c8 b3 and rook c d8 here we must stop for a moment black wants to eliminate pressure on uh, the file with his last last move and now i ask you dear chess friends what would be your reaction if you say something like bishop b6 a b and g4 you will be correct you would suggest good move but the problem is white won't be able to win that game that looks really perfect for white knight dominates over the bishop white will infiltrate king to e4 knight to f5 but what to do else actually it is very fine for but but that position is deeply analyzed by petrosian and he showed showed us that domination on squares e4 and f5 and pressure on pawn f6 will not give white uh win for sure actually uh, domination on e4 and f5 and attack on f6 can be count only if one opponent's weakness so analyzing deeply potential minor piece and game after exchanging both pairs of rooks Petrosian proved he won't be able to create uh, additional weakness uh, in opponent's camp on the queen's side so because he was not able uh, to create because he won't be able to create additional weakness on the queen side he decided not to go for this and okay we should just uh, pay attention to his words uh, show respect to his analysis and if great petrosian a real master of static and uh, of positions having knight against bishop was not sure he will win the game we should just believe him so how to continue in that position <coughs> Well, Petrosian decided to go for something shocking. Well, if you see position doesn't matter briefly or deeper, you will uh, evaluate bishop on a7 is far the worst piece. But that bishop is main defender, defending uh, pawn on f6 and controlling spots c5 and 
d6. And shocking Petrosian, Petrosian's decision was bishop c5. What a surprise. Why to exchange good bishop for bad one? Well, the point is black knight would be paralyzed and white will dominate with his own knight. Let's see what happened. After exchanging, uh, let's, let's just mention that after bishop c5, black loses the pawn. So now there is uh, rook d8, black must not take with rook because exchange is gone. As a result, pawn b7 will fall. So after that, rook d1 happened, rook d1 taking and now rook e8. Knight goes back to e4, black must protect it and of course white plays g4. Rook on e6 is out of work, knight, c7, knight b6 out of work, let's remind words of great Tarash, who said once knight on b6 is always bad. Of course, there is some dose of joke, but of course, in any joke there is half of truth. So, let's see, black decided to play a5. Uh, that move was not played with idea to make some country play there, there is nothing he can achieve, but simply, if white wants to organize advancing, for instance, after king c2, king c3, b4, black wants just to exchange as more pawns as possible to get some relief. After a5, rook d3, of course, white is ready to transfer rook even there if needed. Now I will remind you words of great Capablanca of another genius. Third rank should be opened for rook's maneuvers. Knight d7. Now, of course, some combinator players will go for this, which would be horrible mistake of course there is something white cannot win don't complicate don't exchange active pieces for passive pieces just with idea to make some combination brilliance just play normally and healthy king c2 king goes closer to the center rook f3 a3 well white prepares advancing on the king side and c5 Black is practically forced to play this move, but because white threatened to play even that b4 and c5 himself to get control over square d6 and to lock rook on e6 forever. Black played c5, but now you can see, knight is restricted, sadly restricted by all pawns. And just look, please, even if knight comes to b8 and c6, or f8 and d6, white will just play e3 and still knight from e6 and c6 would be able to go just nowhere. So a lot of arrows, but I just want to demonstrate that knight is absolutely horrible piece. So in addition, white has so many new uh, weak squares, key squares he can use, and you will see how that will bring uh, easy win to white. Now king c3, patient play, rook d3, Rook c6, rook d5. That move is not dangerous, that is just demonstration of power. That rook actually threats nothing, but psychologically it puts some pressure because it is on opponent's territory. Knight f8, knight g3, okay. Some maneuvers, king e8 and e3. White is ready to activate king, king d3, king e4. Rook goes back. King goes to the side post spot. And that is important position. We must stop now for a moment. I think their opponents were already in time trouble. That was move 35 played. Now Petrosian should do his 36th move. And uh, he allowed some strategical mistake with knight d6. I will give you easy win. Uh, he should play just rook d6. But <coughs> still I think... Uh, he decided not to go for some drastic measures uh, in move 36. Perhaps, probably, he waited uh, for time control to get additional time and then to calculate how to crack the opponent's position. So, in that position, after capturing, just look. After knight b5, white sets knight on d5, king to f5, and black wouldn't be able simultaneously to protect that both pawns. I'll show you some variation which will prove that. Looks like white 
has nothing but there is just some waiting move let's say h6 and black is in deadly zugzwang any move will cost him material white is trivially winning but instead of rook d6 white played knight d6 and king e7 knight goes back still move 38 white decide not to go for this i do not know if threefold repetition uh rule existed in 1958 and I do not know uh, if black practically had chance to claim for draw here. There is threefold repetition, but okay, let's just forget about it and keep focus on the position. Now Petrosian did another mistake. If he wanted to do some neutral waiting move, he should play just rook d2. He played a4. Uh, that move spoils nothing because white will win game on the king side, but methodically for every coach for every trainer, it's important to learn students how to do some waiting moves. So who knows in that moment, maybe white won't be able to win position to win on the king's side. So maybe white would be practically forced to open some another front with king c3 and b4. So white to lose that possibility, black anyway threatens nothing on the queen side. So a4 is not a mistake, I will repeat. A4 is not mistake strictly from chess point of view, but from methodical point of view, it is. So, knight d8. Now white started with some strange maneuver, knight h6. And after knight e6, that's forced. I show you, rook e6 loses after this. Where black loses material, definitely. King e7 instead would also lead to the same. White wins. Knight b7 instead would lead to this. And now rook d7, excellent move where white wins after uh, attacking knight and invading with his king for sure. Now knight d6 uh, will cost black material after king d5. So practically only move is to uh, move knight back to e6 where knight g8 Missing wins several times, white must find unique moves to crash black defense. So, if king f7, another beautiful win is this. Due to double attack, white penetrates with his king and game is over. So, after that, knight f8 was played and now waiting move rook d2. And finally, white achieved same position. And finally, he found win with rook d6. After this, rest is trivial, more or less, knight g7 with idea to prevent king f5. I want to show you just once again that that is just winning for white, where e4 or f3 or h6 will just bring white easy win. So, knight b5, knight g7, but now h6, white insists in using f5 with the king. Now after knight e8, king can go to d5. That's even better because black knight is paralyzed and you can see knight is imprisoned in his own camp. Nothing is possible to do. Black just decided uh, to suck material to get some relief, but white correctly takes that pawn, still keeping knight out of play. Just take a look on Petrosian, beautiful realization. Now he played knight c3 with idea to transfer knight there. Idea is to take g5 and h7. g3, of course, white takes. And first check. And now king e6. Who cares about that pawn g4? Well, I just want to use fact black king is stuck to place king on d7 and to advance e pawn with an easy wing. So, once again, classierization demonstrated by Petrosian. So what is important in that game? I want to pay attention once again on two important moves. Well, very often you should support your initiative with some drastic measures and Petrosian found brilliant possibility to support it with h4 in that moment. And a bit later on in some key position, uh, that's the position of course, Instead of taking on b6, which I would do probably automatically, of course. Bishop c5 was played and after that Petrosian saw that 
After eliminating Black's main defender, he will dominate with knight against the opponent knight, which won't be able practically to uh, take part in, in, the, in, the, in the clash. So, as you can see, that was so instructional example, and that's why I suggest to all coaches and to all trainers uh, to deeply analyze Petrosian games, and it's definitely highly recommended to explain that in detail to their students. I hope, dear chess friends, you enjoyed that video, and I hope you will support us and enjoy in our next lectures. See you soon. Bye-bye.